uh, I am going to talk about current status of medical research in India and way forward. I don't think that uh, we need to be Einstein to know the current status of medical research. It is dismal. And again, I would thank uh, Gaurav for providing me this wonderful paper. That's a beautiful uh, paper from Dr. Nandi Guru. Uh, we just highlighted that only 25 institutions produce more than 100 papers a year in India from India. And most of the medical college did not have a single publication during this period. And I have studied in or uh, two top colleges of the Gujarat, and I would say until I passed out, I don't know what the research is. For me, yeah. research was just we used to read the introduction and directly jump to the discussion and then the conclusion. And we felt that, oh, we are reading so many things and we know now, now know everything. So if we compare with the West and every other part of the country, the Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, per year, they published around 4,600 papers and Mayo Clinics is around 3,700 papers. But let me tell you that research or learning research methodology is not only about publishing. Of course, by publication, you get some good postgraduate admission in the abroad, you get matched. But is it only about publication? So here also for people who are in the clinical practice need to understand the difference between observation and evidence. See, uh, I like to quote the great Copernicus. He said that to know that we what we know and to know that we do not know what do we do not know is the true knowledge. So mm -hmm. if we say observation, uh, sun moves around the earth was everybody's experience, right? But until unless we found the evidence that it is earth moves around the sun, that is contradictory to all our observation and all our experience. So evidence is not always directly correlated with the experience. But if evidence-based experience that I always like to quote, evidence-based experience is always add something to evidence. So this is my favorite quote that blind experience enslaves, enslaves you, but evidence-based experience enriches you. Uh, in my day-to-day -day, uh, clinical practice, I come across the colleagues uh, who uh, read, come out, they are very well read, read all the guidelines, read all the level 1A evidences, but practice otherwise. So once I ask them, why you do that? Say, no, 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 in our experience, we do not believe in this paper or we do not, it is not about flawed or flawed research methodology. But we have not seen that, so we do not believe this. And this is the biggest mistake as clinician we can do. So generally, there is an evidence cycle. And every evidence cycle starts with the question. So here, research question is very much important. And in my belief, generally, research question should be your own. Uh, think about the thing that uh, Newton is sitting under the tree. He sees see the apple uh, fall and he asks himself why this apple fell or and you have the theory of gravity. In 1905, Einstein started with a very simple question. What if I'm sitting on the beam of light and I am traveling with the speed of light? What will happen? And from that generated the special theory of relativity. Then he asked himself why Newton's theory did not explain the orbital moment of mercury and we have the theory of gravity or theory of relativity the one of the biggest invention but the same einstein if you really read einstein you will understand the same einstein failed in later years of right uh, his life trying to explain the unifying theory uh, unifying field theory of gravity or uh, unifying the all four four fundamental forces of the nature because Fundamentally, he was not believing the quantum mechanic, though every experiment was proving the quantum mechanic. So everybody was asking him that why gravity is not being explained by the quantum theory. So he tried to answer the question raised by other people. And in that case, he failed. So research question should be a simple question. Why in your day to day clinical experience or clinical whenever you read, whenever you see a patient, if you start asking the why, your every why will become your research question. Then comes the next phase. That is the research topic. Research topic is nothing but the scientific way of explaining your uh, research question. 
and then you generate hypothesis. Hypothesis is a specific research question and with specific answer you are expecting, that is yes or no. So in simpler word, whenever you, uh, I think those who are joining must have read some papers. Your primary outcome statement is generally your hypothesis. Now, in our system, what happened that we stopped with the hypothesis and many of us started believing that my hypothesis is right. The reason for that, we are not taught in our MBBS day, the rest of the step. Test with the experiment is nothing but the data collection, but to analyze data or data science, we don't know anything about. Uh, I remember in my MBBS day, only the uh, data analysis, we did not have the computers in those times or they were newly come and never uh, uh, internet was not there in the hostels or uh, say in colleges. So we used to uh, read a pen and paper and in PSM, two or three questions were asked for a chi-square test or uh, prove that or find the odds ratio. We never understood what the chi-square test were. We never understood what the odds ratio. We never understood what we were doing. Like simple math, we are remembering the formula and finding the answer and getting those three or four marks. That is the only data analysis we did. We never understood the data analysis. So when we could not analyze the data, how, to, how do we report conclusions? And then comes that whether conclusion is answering your question or not, or are they producing new question? From new question comes the new research. But unfortunately, we never understand or complete this evidence cycle. So what actually happens that 90% of our faculties, 90% of our conference talks, 90% of our clinical practitioners suffer from what we call the confirmation bias. If an evidence agrees with our belief, we will immediately believe that it is true. But if the same evidence is contradictory to our belief, we will outrightly reject it. Now, largest mass confirmation bias we have seen in the recent time during COVID pandemic. One is Ramdesivir. Ramdesivir was the first drug approved. We all wanted something and it came. And the company came with the trial with false methodological. Basically, uh, if you read the paper, there are many methodological flaws, but primary outcome was early recovery and people were dying. We were not interested in early recovery, but somehow it became the magic drug because in our two to three patient we gave that patient recovered. Now patient may, might have recovered due to any cause, but we attributed that to Ramdesivir. And then all the, uh, I would say the widespread drama that Ramdesivir shortage happened and black marketing happened. I don't know who earned from all these things. But the Ramdesivir was the product of large-scale confirmation bias. Second thing was, unfortunate, the mucor pandemic. We, uh, no doubt, steroid health. But we failed to see that they have used only 8 mg of DEXA. That is equivalent to 40 mg of prednisolone. And I have seen my colleagues, my friends, were giving 1,000 mg of hydrocort, 1 gram of prednisolone and whatnot. And... Same evidence said we ignored that India is a diabetic capital. So naturally the sugar level rose high and mucor developed. And at that time also, we did not believe that it, is, it was due to our confirmation bias. We, I, I have seen the many posts and many discussion, some uh, hidden uh, fungus in the AC ducts and whatnot. We came with our own theories. Forgetting uh, or forget some whether it, it was due to immunocompromised state, but we forgot to ask our simple thing that why rhino orbital mucor was very common. And we uh, none of us see the cerebral mucor mycosis. Rhino orbital mucor mycosis is always happens in an uncontrolled diabetic. It's a basic Harrison statement. But I think our confirm, uh, confirmation bias overturned all this. The, this is the mass scale confirmation bias. I'm not even talking about confirmation bias in our day-to-day uh, -day practice. So another uh, difference is, uh, I think uh, uh, due to my nephew, I am now a Marvel fan. And Marvel 
is from some of the uh, part of we, we see the multi dimension we observe three dimension and four dimension if we believe einstein that is the time but if you are interested in physics you you will see the string theory is now proving that we may have, we might have been living in ninth or 11 dimension world so we we all have to understand that truth can be what we do not see and we need to come out from this confirmation bias so what is the problem let me start with my journey i entered in the mbbs during our times uh, particularly in gujarat there was no entrance also uh, whatever we got in the i'm talking about uh, my batch is 1999 so i got some 410 marks out of 450 in 12th and i was the king of the world so oh, i will get in some good college and i started my mbbs journey mbbs journey for me there were hardly any classes so we were sitting in the library and mugging up all these books and mbbs completed then at that time uh, admission was based on again mbbs marks and suddenly from our time the entrance came so we started learning mcqs we don't know what the mcqs were how to solve the mcqs so some of us took one or two trials and got in the residency in the residency when I was in general surgery residency. I don't know what the general surgery was all about. In 15 days, my boss asked that we have to submit one thesis topic. How do I submit? How do I question when I don't know the subject? So he gave, let us study about some trauma, thoracic trauma or something. I said, okay, who will say no to your boss? I don't know about current scenario, but Gaurav will agree. We were, uh, uh, we have not done residency in that uh, time, but <laughs> we, we could ask anything to our boss. I said, okay. And started working. We just work, work, work. In our time, the paper we were discussing, I told you, there was no journal clubs. We don't know how to evaluate. Research, the method part, the methodology part we all uh, used to see, that is for some mathematician. We as a doctor we, uh, do not need to read the, those parts. So directly from, from the uh, introduction, conclusions, discussion, and oh, we know that author was saying this, so this must be true. Author was something like a holy grail. So if author is biased, we were biased. If author is wrong, we were wrong. If author is fraud, we were also being frauds because we did not understand what the data is. So I completed my MS, got in the DNB. I was not enjoying, so I uh, directly jumped to the some uh, one uh, liver fellowship in one of the top institute. Great institute. I owe many things to that institute. They were running a great research program. But the problem was. Uh, they have given me a research topic. Now, I was least interested in that topic. And they told me that collect the data, then we will analyze and we will find the thing. So I was working like a clerk and that hurt my ego. I am not something a clerk who just collect the data from the old file and give it to them. So I never worked anything for research. They were very pissed off. They were very pissed off that this person do not want to work. But I was not finding the interest because that, that was not my question. That was I'm trying to answer somebody else's question. So to get motivation in that kind of the scenario is very difficult. See, it's like that uh, many of you might be trying for USMLE. If you want to go for internal medicine and I, if I ask you to re do research in some say surgical field which you are not interested you are not going to work in that so for that the entire process would be just to add something in your cv and get matched and believe me you will not produce anything fruitful from this so i worked my ass off for uh, two to three years there but I started to understanding something, but I was not understanding fully. Yes, I learned how to understand papers from there. But still, how to do research or how to produce paper, I was not interested. Then I went abroad and that one and a half year changed my entire scenario. 
So in the first day, I was in the OT changing room. I changed to the scrubs and entered the OT. So I was in Taiwan. So there was entire, I would uh, just like a foyer. Uh, it, it was just like a Lord Stadium wall of a fame on both sides. They hung the posters and all their published paper. And it was almost uh, 750 meters walkway with uh, 15, 20 papers. I just asked how to do that. I want to do something like this. And of course, then you entered the OT and operate. Operating is a part of the thing. But I wanted, so I uh, went to my boss who is world-renowned uh, transplant surgeon. I knocked to his cabin. And now Taiwanese people are very poor in English. So I don't know whether it's the, he was not able to speak or I asked, so I want to do things. He said three words. You are encouraged and started eating again. So I asked, sir, should I start? He looked at me and said, you are encouraged. Finished. So I came out. At that time, there was a hot topic of small pore size uh, syndrome going on. That portal flow modulation, how to do that, uh, whether splenectomy or not. So on the same day, OT, they will uh, done a splenectomy. I said, why? Because the graft was small. So I think, uh, why? Whether we can use the smaller graph or not. And then started my research question. Okay, I want to know this. So they have beautiful uh, data keeping record. So I collected all the data myself. Uh, I have the co-fellow who had SPSS, uh, that is the statistical software for who they doesn't know. So I downloaded from this. I entered the whole data. Now again came to the zero level, how to do this? Because uh, uh, they do not have statistician. I, I have only three words, you are encouraged. So I started uh, looking at YouTube video. I understand what, I started understanding what the logistic regression means, what the odds ratio actually means. When we use that, what is the risk ratio? What is the univariant and multivariant analysis? What do we mean by when we say this factor independently predicted the outcome? And within one month, I understood everything. And SPSS is a beautiful software. You just have to click the test. And uh, I also learned how to record data because there are specific way you have to either enter your answer should be in the way of yes or no. What is categorical way, uh, uh, variable? What are, what are the continuous variables? So I learned all that. And then I just clicked on the test and result came. And that moment, uh, I felt like uh, I was on the top of the Everest and I did everything. And that from that moment, my interest started. And no one taught me. Believe me, no one taught me. I have not taken any official uh, uh, lectures. I just start asking various questions to myself, to nobody else. And after that, I uh, look at the data. I found the suddenly the portal flow was giving very significant results. So I start, uh, written my first paper, and that is my first published paper also. Uh, you can see on the Google for portal flow and SFSS. And that is currently the my most cited paper even after seven years. It has been cited around 40 to 50 times. And uh, some of the some of it taken in the guideline also. And that paper, I learned everything on that paper. So that's how my first paper came out. So I then how did I do, uh, do the jump to the next paper? So from there, I had the data. I just thought yeah, I want to do something from this data. So in the first paper, I studied that whether portal flow was a significant everybody was discussing portal pressure portal flow now many waters have uh, gone under the bridge and now we are into portal hemodynamics and uh, some of the complex equations people are deriving but that was i was talking about 2011 12 that was the sfss was a very hot topic during this, those times so i looked at the again the data i have seen that my boss has used some low grw uh, graph with portal flow modulation and he used to do splenectomy so 
I just asked another question that when, when we use loads with ERWR graph with portal flow modulation, is there any difference in graphed outcomes? Simple question, day-to-day -day question that we see in daily clinical practice, all the transplant surgeon would see that. So I applied some tests in the, my same data because when you study small post size syndrome, of course, you're, uh, you must have recorded the uh, graphed outcomes also. So it is the same question asked differently. And I found some results, published that, and that, that's how came out my second paper. So then one day, my colleague, uh, who was from Poland, he wanted to study uh, hepatitis C virus and HCC relationship. And he recorded, he shown to, because uh, uh, he has seen that I have published two papers from that center. So he came to me that uh, I want you to evaluate this data. So I evaluated him. I found another uh, thing in that. He, he has mentioned that rapid fibrosis. So I looked out the literature. There is specific definition of rapid fibrosis HC, or post HCV. Now, this was pre sophos era. So HCC recurrence was a big problem uh, post LDLT. So I just asked him that. Uh, can you give me your data? I will add your name. Okay, they said, no problem. So he started HCV in HCC. And I looked at that rapid fibrosis, whether rapid fibrosis is associated with HCC recurrence. We are talking about HCV related uh, rapid fibrosis and whether it was associated with HCC recurrence or not. So I applied the I, whatever method I learned in another person data and that came out the third paper. So publishing paper is not about doing some difficult calculation oh i want to publish you cannot publish by wanting to publish you can do research by asking yourself the question why is the most important thing if you want to publish so that's how i started my journey and then of course i came back to india started practicing shelby now in india corporate hospitals Basically, we practice like a private practice and we practice individually. So I have lost my all my data with the Taiwan Center. But I had a habit of asking myself a question. So whenever complication occurs, I ask, why did this complication occur? Now, after seven years, I have some amount of data of 700,000 patients. But at that time, I started collecting the data, but I, I was not having my original data. So naturally, I could not publish my ori any original articles. How to do that? I had that habit of asking the question. So I thought to myself, I, now I will have to learn the meta-analysis. Because the, that, that is the only way I can answer my question at the same time the do a meaningful research. Because narrative re, uh, for me, uh, and I may be being harsh, but for me, narrative re uh, review is useless because it's a biased version of an author. If I believe in something, I will turn out all the paper who is agreeing with my finding and write a paper. So that, that will become a narrative review. So I started learning uh, meta-analysis. Again, from YouTube video, I downloaded a, a fantastic software, Reviewman, which is the official uh, software from Cochrane and very easy to do it. Uh, just as a game, I uh, used to enter some three or four papers and uh, try to churn out various forest plots. And then I read some book, uh, uh, visited YouTube because uh, I, this I am talking about 2014-15, though we have already entered in YouTube era. And then step by step learned how to do meta-analysis. So from there, my meta-analysis paper started coming out. Then I look at the, that Reviewman software did not have how to do a prevalence meta-analysis. And I wanted to know that whether my outcome or my mortality rates or complication rate are matching with the world or I am doing bad. How to do that? So I started run the prevalence meta-analysis and found a software that is JSP that uh, give, uh, every software I use, SPSS I got from my, uh, I got it from my friend. Reviewman is free, JSP is free. So I got, downloaded that software and started doing the prevalence meta-analysis. Learn from that. Uh, then in my, if, if you uh, completely see my paper initially, my paper was, uh, every paper was not great. 
initially you will see you will not find that uh, uh, publication bias figures or uh, whatever i said because i didn't know how to uh, run that uh, publication uh, bias uh, statistics and subsequently i learned that also and started producing this so i never uh, used any help from any statistician simply because i could not afford it so i have not read any complicated book i have not done anything but i just keep asking question to myself uh, see uh, recently the uh, i do a wipal and uh, wipal leak and i say that uh, i have done the procalcitonin it was normal still why uh, it leak and then i uh, did a meta analysis whether the pct was predicting infection complication or not so in my meta analysis they showed uh, uh, result showed that it was predicting so my case was an off case so my observation was not right but it all started by asking the simple question in day to day life if i have if i had the data i produce an original papers if i did not had the sufficient data i just started doing meta analysis and analyze started analyzing literature systematically so that's how my publication journey started and it's not believe me friends it's not a rocket science at all if i can learn everybody can learn i am i am not something some great i have uh, invested many hours in that but i just continuously ask question and that question should be mine i firmly believe that if you want to do research question should be yours you can't do research in someone else question of course you can be a part of the team you can uh, collect the data and submit it but you will not own your project until and until you have the enthusiasm to find the answer i it can be either single endedly or it can be as a team in the, when you are doing research as a team the question should be the entire team answer to it should be whatever entire team wants to know and not even your uh, top two pure people or top three people or your boss wanted to know because if you don't want to find the answer whatever whatever you will do it will be a, just a clerical job and in that case i don't think anybody can find us uh, give a significant outcome so that was the my journey and up till post residency if you have heard you you must have understood what is the problem in our system we are not training our juniors we are not training our junior to ask a basic question that is why in our exam we treat them to, uh, we teach them to ask two question what what is the answer and where from where you should find the answer that's it we do not teach them to ask the basic question why is this answer if learn if they learn to ask this basic question why i don't think we would have this discussion and we would that this basic problem so that is my take as i said why i published that uh, i am a very big fan uh, and reader of richard feynman and he always said the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you yourself are easiest person to fool oh i did develop this complication it is due to some patient related factor uh oh this paper is uh, telling me like this and uh, but in my experience i have seen that this does not happen that this must be a wrong so never fool the question and i have amply discuss about the one basic important question and i firmly believe that it is all about why i may be repeating myself multiple times but basic question remains why and i published before because of the single reason uh you must have understand i am in a private practice the, the publication i know that is not going to enhance my career or it is not going to bring me more patients or it will not going to increase my earning that all so by asking simple question it became my hobby so that is why i published so all this also should be individual really? why you want to publish to conclude research is a very personal thing my why is my why and it is not your why if you understand that i think uh, your 90% problem would be solved so i have already discussed how i learned this methodology by simply asking me uh, asking the question then 
uh, in my school days, I was uh, luckily very good in math and research methodology is all about mathematically ma mathematics. So slowly I have started getting interest. So I progressed from uh, frequent statistic to Bayesian statistic. Now recently I have submitted one paper on machine learning and I'm learning that I am not expert in that. Actually, I'm not an expert in any of the thing, but I have now working knowledge of doing all these things. So second thing is, are we coping with the progress? World has moved from frequentist bias uh, versus Bayesian statistic and they are fighting now. And machine learning is using all these things. Now, if you say 90% of the paper, I say, uh, in from Indian setup, I see most of that just mention the percentage. And then we complain that why we uh, it is not accepted. But if you understand the research methodology, if you just mention your finding in percentage, you are not answering the question properly. Or at the most, some are using the word that, okay, for us, statistics is like that. For categorical variable, we will use chi-square test. For continuous variable, we will use student t-test and our work is over. That's what I see in 90% of our paper. And we do not understand the limitation of this. The, of course, this talk is not re about research methodologically. So, so I will not go into deeper uh, into that. But uh, let me just briefly say, what do we mean when we say frequentist versus Bayesian war? So frequentist is a routine statistical method that we routinely use, uh, like odds ratio, risk ratio, uh, ROC curves. This all, but basically in frequentist method, we are answering about population. So when I say that uh, I toss a coin, my frequentist answer would be the probability of head and tail would be 50-50%, right? We all agree on that. So when I say that uh, smoking causes lung cancer and odds ratio is three, that means that uh, smoking has a three times higher uh, odds of uh, developing lung cancer than the normal population. We are talking about the population. So let me ask you a simple question. If uh, some of the person asks, okay, uh, if uh, I toss a coin, there are a probability of 50-50%. Is it sure that if I uh, toss a coin just 10 times, five times it will be head and five times it will be tails? It is not necessary, right? For that in frequentist approach, we use larger sample size. But what if my uh, coin is biased toward head? or in our day-to-day -day practice, what is my, my sample size or the sample I wanted to predict is biased towards something or say apart from smoking, the patient that I am seeing as a genetically or uh, they are genetically prone to develop lung cancer. So how do I predict that my next smoker will develop lung cancer or not? So Bayesian people just ask this question, what if my coin is biased toward head? So what they did? Uh, if some of you under, uh, remember math, we use the base principle in the probability that probability of A by B is equal to probability of B by A, B in the event of A into probability of A divided by probability of B. So same principle is applied in a complex way here that Bayesian statistician use a prior. That is the pilot study of or your belief that in my sample probability is this and then apply it to the population and then find the answer and whatever probability will come that will give you the probability of outcome in your sample. So that is the basically a Bayesian method of uh, doing research. Frequentist is about population where you believe that the sample is random. In Bayesian statistics, they believe that outcome is random. So it is just a different way of looking the thing. And now there is a big war in mathematical world there, which is right. But actually both are right. And it's again depend on the which research question you are asking. If I want to ask that my whether smoking is a risk factor of lung cancer in world or not, my I will jump to a frequentist. But if I want to ask that whether smoking my person or my patient who is smoking will develop the lung cancer or not. I think in that particular case, Bayesian statistics is slightly better. Of course, war is on, but this is the brief scenario that difference between these two type of methods. Now, what is more to the machine learning? 
the what is machine learning or ai we talk about it so machine learning is nothing but the use the your computer find via software find a pattern in your data and how do they find the pattern same old either frequentist method they use same linear regression they use same logistic regression and just that apply to the next particular person and predict so when i say when you see the in your open your facebook or open your netflix based on your past watching they will suggest you something they uh, they will just uh, tell you uh, show you the ad which are you are likely to watch how do they find that it is the same odds ratio because they have your earlier data and now predicting odds of your watching this ad is five times than the normal population so you will be bombarded with that ad the machine learning is nothing but the same old statistical method done by computers because after uh, it revolution we have now large amount of data and to analyze that much larger data is sometimes beyond human capacity but your computers can do it via software so they are using the same method and giving you the outcome and current most of the ai uh, medical research is all about this we think ai is a something a new thing but it, it is the same age old method applied differently by using large amount of sample size very large sometimes uh, it is uh, more than the entire world population it can be more than the entire world population so they are fi finding maybe accurate so that is the machine learning is nothing something that has come out of blue or something which is new but it is just the same mathematical mathematical use or that is the reason why data analysts are coming out from iits or engineers because they are the same mathematicians who are trained to produce this kind of outcome they are not something some robots or something because the ai when we say we think about some robots or machine predicting everything but it's a simple statistical mathematical prediction so these are the basic software which everybody can use uh, one is the standard software r i have learned it uh, i have a basic uh, certificate of the course r is free of course easy to learn but it has a separate code you you, you need to give some uh, only knowing which method to use may not be enough you need to know the codes to run it so you have to learn r that is the only drawback spss of course to buy it is a very costly process uh but it is same like we are this powerpoint or world you have option if you want to uh, apply logistic regression you you just click on the logistic reg uh, regression uh enter your outcome variable enter your study variable you will find the result it is very easy to use but the most student friend, uh, friendly and it is developed by uh, some university in Pro portugal jsp uh particular university of amsterdam or something it is free easy to download it includes every frequentist method basic uh, which is required for our basic research bayesian method and machine learning method in, uh, in fact the last paper i uh, submitted in which is currently under review i use the machine uh, learning uh, algorithm from jsp only of course i am not a some uh, it engineer who will develop its his own algorithm so i use the simple software and it is very easy to use very easy to understand jsp can do your meta analysis only and mo also most meta analysis can be done but you need to find some time to if you can understand each and every parameters of forest plot, plot you will be able to do a meta analysis uh, using jsp or rivman you just need to get yourself familiar with, i would say it will not take more than a week or 15 days i learned by why uh why are preparing the manuscript there is another jam movie which is also people say excellent i have not used it so i have not commented on this but these all are freely available software which anybody can use so way forward i was just giving some of my opinion and again i would say their opinion is not an evidence and this is the uh, complex problem cannot be solved by a single person or a single clinician so it should be start from the school level so start from the basic instilling them basic enthusiasm to ask the basic question why and i am a strong opinion that our mbbs curriculum should 
focus on research methodology as a separate subject and it has to be asked in for a PG entrance exam because until it is asked in the entrance exam, no one is going to study for it. Research methodology and we can, uh, of course, remove some of the uh, portion which are we all know useless, but we continue to study it. Second, research methodology or medical research can be a separate postgraduate branch. And we need to find some way to reward researchers. See, uh, for me, research is a hobby. But if you want to develop research in a country, we cannot develop as a hobby. We need to find some way to pay them. And certainly in market-driven uh, area, certainly we will ask that, uh, uh, why should we pay them? What outcome they will bring? I would just say that if you start thinking in evidence-based approach and your outcome, you will see the benefit it brings, how better you can manage your patient. And it is the same way if Netflix start uh, asking, why should I pay out my data, data scientist? And then if really learning data science, we show them that because I am increasing your sales by this, because I am making more people watch your show. The same way uh, it actually can happen in hospitals. This same methodologically can be applied in marketing research. Same methodology, stock market statistics is nothing but the same thing. We can apply everywhere. We can improve our outcome. We can know why we are uh, pro not producing a good outcome and how we can give a better outcome to the patient and then your practice will increase. And at that time, you will understand the why this is all important. And it is not just a hobby thing. It can be a viable economic thing. Data audit has to be made mandatory for all hospitals, whether it is government and private. And medical researchers who are trained in research methodologies can be recruited. Of course, we need to have widespread discussion. Our conferences should be about research and uh, not a, a paper presentation in separate rooms where poor residents are presenting without understanding everything and no one attends. And on the same thing, we want to market our big faculties and most of the time they will continue to show same presentation in every conference. Frequent conference visitors will know because they, uh, we believe that if they will bring uh, uh, more uh, delegates, but the day faculty will start going to that uh, paper presentation room and okay, I've, I've been invited to give this talk. Okay, you are my resident. You can just uh, deliver this paper on separate forum. But if it is your question, when you start presenting, people will be motivated. And I find European conference very encouraging regarding that part. If you, uh, you have visited European conference, most of, most of the conference is all about presenting data. In, uh, I don't know, some of, not in this, this uh, drawback is not limited to India. I find US conference also in the same way. We present the paper published. Now people, I always, uh, I may be, again, I may be sounding a little bit harsh, but I always ask that this paper, I will go and uh, surf from the internet and read myself. I, why should I spend 7,000, 10,000, 25,000 registration fee to see a paper which I, I can in my home freely download on my internet and read that? I will read that. If you want me to attend that, show me your data. How you, your data is different from the uh, other part of the world or published literature. And why you are doing what you are doing. I'm not saying nobody is presenting that. Many excellent faculties are presenting their data, but still the percentage is very limited. So the conference should change and somehow uh, travel grants, travel, we are, we are not doing some kind of a charity by promoting research. The tra travel grant is a joke to a researcher, I must say. Some $500 or $700 or we'll provide you 5,000 rupees. That will not cover my airfare also. So why would I would spend my three months of time in doing research for this topic? So we don't have any data from India. We don't pay our researchers. But in US also, average salary for uh, medical researchers is around $61,000. That is equal to their residency. And their residency is not some kind of a lucrative stipend. If you compare with their lifestyle, 61000 is not great that you will encourage people to enter the research field. So I don't know how to do that, but somehow until and until, unless we pay our researchers, journals are earning millions 
as i say that uh, pride alone can get uh, cannot get you a bread of course i am earning bread by other means so i can say that okay research is my hobby research is uh, giving me some kind of pride or i can say that i have published 75 odd paper or i'm something cause, but if that is not giving you a bread a younger generation will not come into it so we need to find a convert a hobby into the career and not not just some kind of a usmle match requirement because if people do not see as a hobby people will publish to getting matched or selected but their outcome and the quality of that paper would not be that great and unfortunately the people sitting there in the interview understand uh, many a times uh, Uh, i get call from some uh, medical college student some come to meet me also that i want to be part of your research project okay uh, i just ask them that i am doing this project what can you add or what you want to know from this topic no any sir whatever you say we will do i don't think research can be done that way you need to ask your question uh, yourself that i want to know about this and when you really want to know about this automatically uh, you will get publication in you will be pu- be a published author it's not that difficult but it should be start by asking yourself a question so with that i think i will conclude thank you very much thank you uh, thank you very much dr uh, dr vasawda for giving a really good insight about uh, your journey and the current status of medical research i would say um, so there are a couple of insights that uh, that coming uh, right away in my mind are um, so the the first insight is uh, you should know your why and then you just dig out more and try to find those answers so the first thing is uh, whatever you are doing or whatever you are asking it should be yours so there has to be a intrinsic motivation rather than uh, extrinsic uh, motivations that um, that most of the students are looking for as of now because they are in second years and third years they they want to uh, get published they want to you know Uh, see their cv uh, having couple of publications before they jump into a residency in states yeah but and- uh, see gaurav what happens and this is also again uh, uh, i am telling from my experience when you yeah. produce research like that you will yeah. be very demotivated by your first rejection yeah because yeah. see there are many predatory journals and publication in predatory journals will not add any value to your cv i agree I agree uh, and if your research paper is not good Uh, i review for many journals and it will be outrightly disrejected agreed if your research question is not sound and there is no point see uh, you will have some poster presentations uh, if you submit in something in some uh, conferences your whatever you say if you uh, say uh, if you submit something in say surgery conferences and it is about the story of rabbit and tortoise let me tell you it will be accepted as a poster agreed because people want more delegates yeah, yeah. and but uh, many faculties who are sitting in your interview also already know this so okay, okay. poster presentation may not add some value to your cv until and unless it is published in some standard journal and it's not about indexing or uh, uh, what impact factor journal is it all it's all about what have you studied how have you studied how strong is your methodology if people really want to evaluate research uh, sane people and i would i would say most of the faculties who are evaluating your cvs are very senior and very sane people yeah so they will know whether you have really done a research or you have faked your research so do not try to fake your research do not try to just add name that uh, someone else is uh, doing the research and as a team I, they have just entered my name or what we call is a gift authorship yeah because if authorship is gifted until you have not done the hard work you will not understand a b and c about that outcome or research methodologically how they have applied and someone will ask they will come to know in just single question that you have not done that research agree the the second uh, so so uh, dr vasavada what is happening is you know now people are uh, people are becoming desperate to be published in whatever ways they can and now you can see a lot of 
journals and uh, you know other things are coming up there are other uh, people they say i will uh, do this and then your name will be there and you you have to pay that much of amount so there are a lot of things are happening the, the basic question that we are not asking is why i am doing it i mean uh, for a medical students where there is no infrastructure there is uh, there is uh, there is no mentors basically the people are doing practice in a government hospitals probably they are not you know spending enough time uh, they are not mentoring the students and students don't know how, what to do about it so they don't have a basic infra let's say uh, like access to the the articles probably uh, clubs you know uh, asking the right questions and the big thing is we don't have data that is the problem i mean you have done your first paper when you went to the taiwan right yes yes but so the, the same you, thing i the same thing i said na that yeah. uh, see uh, if you if we do not have the data yeah exactly it, it is very easy to publish the meta analysis because in when private practice i did not have the data exactly exactly and meta analysis is nothing but the level 1 evidence you cannot yeah, exactly. publish a better paper than that i agree i completely agree so and, so, and, and if you do meta analysis from the question which you are asking or the uh, branches or future that you are seeing that i want to do something in this topic the amount of reading you will do in just collecting the literature exactly will yeah. prepare you for everything yeah that is the best reading and uh, better than any books best reading anyone can have mm -hmm. and second mm -hmm. thing that asking for yourself a question is uh, not most of the time why we do not ask question we we feel that i have question everybody of us uh, uh, will have some question but we feel am i asking a stupid question yeah yeah will someone will consider it as stupid let me tell you there are no stupid questions every questions uh, are intelligent enough again i will quote uh, in his era when einstein asked that what if i am traveling on a beam of the light that is the most stupid stupidest question ever one can ask yeah but special theory theory of relativity came out from that question a single question yeah, so agreed. i think be brave to ask yourself a question and mm -hmm. if you are going to the mentor i think the best way to do is that i want to do something about it yeah what is the current status i want to something about this topic or i want to know this why this first research question should not be a framed primary outcome research question it's a, it can be a very rough question when what currently we are doing that students are coming that i want to part of the project please give me some project yeah instead the way should be that i want to do something in this can you help me exactly so so that that's what i am reiterating again there there is a lack of intrinsic motivation there is uh, they should keep asking questions why uh, you know rather than i want to be a part of it and uh, this uh, the second is um, so there is a lot of extrinsic motivation rather than intrinsic motivation and the other thing that we are lacking here let's say in the state of gujarat um in the all medical college in in a, in a broader sense we don't have a proper data collection and nobody believes you know whatever you publish or whatever you do uh if you if you don't have a proper data collections uh, your uh, whatever you publish be you know above that you no know, nobody will believe it so but, uh, but again i tell you data collection is a process and yeah. uh, uh for students i can understand it is very difficult but data collection should be your day to day habit yeah, exactly for example yeah. uh, you operated today something yeah you spend 5 year 5 hours in that case you will uh, just uh, at least you can get a 5 minutes to enter that patient detail in your uh, standard excel sheet exactly. and when you entered one or two patients every day at the end of the year yeah. you will have a uh, data of 500 odd patients 100% 100% you, so that you can you, you can dig out a question before and then go to your record yeah uh, exactly. bring out the files and collect the data that become the very cumbersome uh, uh, process mm -hmm. and most of the your idea die down at that level because you can't collect the data in our bureaucratic systems agree so it has uh, to be a simple excel sheet on your computer that to uh, you start with the question then uh, go to the clinical side daily see one or two patient one or two patient enter that uh, data into your excel sheet and slowly you will build up the data that is why uh, publishing original papers is not that easy 
the other thing i observed it people want it you know in a very uh, very time uh, sensitive manner let's say i have 3 months uh, before i am applying to the states uh, i need to publish something whatever it is a case report or case series or whatever so see, uh, as if you if you if i see your journey you started in 2010 now 20, and I, 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 my my first paper came out in 2030 yeah so you, and 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 and, and, and uh, let me tell you uh, the uh, i am today boasting about 40 citation 50 citation for two years i have only a single research paper in google scholar, scholar and i was waiting oh ho i was with the first mail of citation came after one and a half year and i was and now it is a routine thing after uh, uh, yeah. 150 200 odd citations but uh, uh, first mail came oh ho someone has read my research so i am a big <laughs> researcher or something like that <laughs> So it's a, it's a, it's a gradual process. Yeah, exactly. It's a long term process. The idea is to uh, to have attitude shift like you know you want to do and you want to ask the right questions not even in your training even in your clinical practice also. So um, so attitude shift is needed and um, the second part I think uh, have the right infra and tools and mentors where at least we are we are igniting the next generation to do something Uh, yes that they come up you with you see my, my message to next generation is very simple that uh come with the question yeah yeah and find appropriate mentors agree do not first find the mentors and then hope that they will give you some question yeah. they will add your names and see today is the in, in, uh, information era so no info, every information is free and uh, everyone want to get some credit so i would say that uh, getting a mentor is not that difficult that it used to be in the past thing uh, to learn a simple surgery uh, we used to travel uh, to abroad and spend some time and now the same surgery is freely available on youtube and everyone is uploading it any 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 final comments before you uh, before we uh, you know leave the sessions dr dr sardar final com- comment would be i think research is a journey yeah uh it should be at present unfortunately it should be a hobby yeah uh do not expect quick returns yeah but let me tell you that uh, it's a, a very enjoyable journey and once you get your first paper published you will automatically be motivated exactly reviewing submitting uh to tell you uh, tell you the truth now uh, uh i'm busy with uh, my nephew's neat and all this thing so uh, uh i submitted two months back and since two months i'm not doing anything so i'm cursing myself that i need to start something about this i'm not <laughs> finding the time that should not be the answer so yeah, yeah once you are on this journey it's a very enjoyable journey and it yeah. is not as difficult as it is perceived currently exactly because yeah. many students believe that we are not taught that we can not do anything so that is the reason i uh, just described my journey that i was also not taught and nobody has taught me up till now but yeah. my la- latest paper uh, in a form of a letter published in jama surgery so yeah. if a novice like me can publish up to the jama i think everyone can publish in a de- decent index journal at least i agree agree okay then uh, i think we'll uh, we'll conclude the sessions um uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you thank all you. for coming uh, all thank the you. participants and everybody uh, will uh, keep in touch and we'll do something about it thank you thank you thank you sir